enough is enough. So we called the police. There's been numerous times where Alex has gotten physical. She punched me and she broke my nose. Okay, we got a demon child over here. She gonna break her mom's nose, steal $30,000 worth of jewelry, take her car. Jeez, y'all need to get a restraining order or something. This girl's crazy. Check her mugshot though. Look at that bomb ass lighting at the police station. Or I don't know if this is like before and then after she get out of jail. Look what drugs do to your skin. That's horrible. Starting to feel better. Tonight, better. I actually have from to State Farm no, Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, it's a special Christmas night edition NFL on EA Sports. Colt McCoy and the Arizona Cardinals versus Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But if you're going to play football in Arizona, a dome and air conditioning, those are two good things to have. And we've got both here at State Farm Stadium, just west of downtown Phoenix. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Arizona Cardinals. The former Lion, Matt Prater, has it teed up, ready to go, and we are underway now from Glendale. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Tampa Bay's offense set to take the field, and of course, a quarterback, 23-year veteran, who's had a Hall of Fame career several times over, the great Tom Brady. And at one point, he announced to the NFL world that he had accomplished everything he needed to and was going to retire, but then reversed that decision. And I think everyone who likes football loves the fact that he's still out there throwing it around and still at the top of his game. And a career that's seen and accomplished just about everything, he thinks there's always room to add to that legacy. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. And he'll take this up to the 30, a gain of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Brady going to try and throw on third down. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Cards will take over first and ten. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by a guy who's moved around a bit in his career already. Out of the University of Texas, it's Colt McCoy. This is a guy who has studied and learned the game since birth. The son of a coach, grew up in the game, understands how to motivate and how to maneuver the football downfield when given an opportunity under center. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. He lost four there, and it's third down. Well, sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Flush to his right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. And take it right on the 30. 
That'll go as a 42-yard punt, but a net of 32. They had a 10-yard return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. A shotgun give to Fournette, and he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now Brady. Caught on the right side by Jones. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Suckup's kick is good, and the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. So after drive number three here, we have a score, and it's three points after the field goal. I would say the feeling out process for both these teams, I'd say it's over, partner. Everyone understands what's going on now. You've kind of probed a little bit. Now you want to start throwing the big shots. First three points up on the board could be significant. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here too after a good stop. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Here's McCoy. Dancing to his left. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now McCoy. And a throw there going to be incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. This is taken at the 15. It'll be a 39-yard punt. Give him a good 10 yards on the return, and they will take over first and 10. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Here's Brady. Looking downfield for Godwin. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Up the gut, Fournette. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The cards go in nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. To throw, it's Brady. He completes it to Evans. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. 
They'll run it again with Fournette. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Now a play fake, Brady. He'll rifle this one deep right side, and it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play, and guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. And he's going to be stopped up just short of the first down at the Cardinals' 35. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third and short, going with their tight end. A pickup of five that time and a first down. This has been a nice sustained drive, and after a run like that, I'd be surprised if they don't come back with even more running plays. So first and ten now from the 30. Now Brady. This one taken in by Otten. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 52 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Moving. And it's intercepted. And the Cards are going to take possession here at their own three-yard line. CD, when he went to throw that, I'm not sure if he just didn't see where the defense was. Whatever the case, not the throw you're looking for on first and goal. Not at all, because, look, let's face it, that close to the goal line, if you throw an interception, it's going to hurt on any down. But really, the only down you can kind of live with is if you do it on fourth down. The first three, if you don't have it wide open, just get rid of it. Make sure they can't get it and live to fight another down. First and goal, and you throw the pick, not good at all. Throwing again on second down. McCoy. And this one caught by Max Williams. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Second and short. That's a rundown. So it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. On first down, McCoy. And a quick throw here. That's complete. It'll go as a gain of four. And that's going to bring up second down. Now the NFL's leader in rushing touchdowns last year is James Conner. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. From the gun, a give to Connor. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Back to throw. McCoy. And down he goes. A bucket air sack. Vita Vea able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Looking to throw. McCoy. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. 
14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. On fourth down, here's Andy Leon to kick it away. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. And this is caught by Evans. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Again, it's Fournette. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. The Bucks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Brady going to throw. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 33. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Meanwhile, Brady's throw complete to Otten. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. On second down, here's Fournette. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. They got five through the air last play. Now five on the ground, first and 10. On play action, now Brady. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had it and dropped it. That is an unforced error there, and it takes away what could have been a touchdown. Inside handoff now to Fournette. 77 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. On third down, Fournette. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. He's got Otten on the out route. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. Four yards to go on second down from the 7. A handoff to Fournette. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette taking it in from 7 yards away as his guys are able to extend their lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. and Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10-zip as they come up first and 10. 
Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in to put a lick on him was Levante David. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Eluding the pressure right. He's going to let this go deep, back over the middle. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. And that might be exactly where they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. McCoy's throw complete to McBride. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Looking to throw again on second down. McCoy, and they're going to get this down inside the 20. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. And a stiff arm made it a pretty little run. Not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Back to throw. McCoy got his tight end. That's complete. It's McBride. Touchdown, Cardinals. Trey McBride, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Cardinals have got it back to within a score. Prater for the extra point. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. That time, a six-play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown reception from Trey McBride. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The offense back out. There's the veteran bruiser, the running back, Leonard Fournette. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense. Picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. We'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Brady. Pressure comes and the Cardinals bring him down. He'll go for it. It's Brady. He's got a man complete. And he's going to have the Bucks first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Fourth down conversion plays, you usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Brady's throw there complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Sets him up nicely. First and goal. It was a pickup of 14. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. 103 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. It's larger been the air attack that's gotten him down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Coaches talk about it all the time. Players talk about it as well. 
excellent job staying disciplined in coverage and making that stop. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette with his second touchdown here in this first half. And they are able to add on to their advantage. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Extra point put through by Suckup. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. The Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Their quarterback leading this offense back out. He had the short touchdown pass on their previous drive, and they'll begin again here on first and ten. Throwing to start the drive. McCoy, that's complete to McBride. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Second and six, just inside the 30. Looking to throw. McCoy. It's complete to Brown, right side. On the move past the 40. Touchdown, Cardinals. Marquise Brown, 71 yards. And the Cards are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And oh, it's blocked. That's a live ball scooped up by the offense. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Well, the offense coming back out here. Plenty of energy ready to roll, looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Fournette running out of the gun. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield strike. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Brady's throw on third down there is incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. That was fourth and what we would call long in that situation, wasn't it? That wasn't fourth and inches, was it? No, I mean, you get in those situations, fourth and three, fourth and four, that's that's a lot to, what, what would you say, a lot of pizza left in that box. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> Not everyone dove in on that one. In today's NFL, this is a passing down, all right? This is not a running down. That takes a lot of guts to call that play and even better execution. Here's a give to Fournette. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Brady to throw. This is caught by Evans. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now Leonard Fournette. And here he'll get it down to the 7. 
Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Second and six with the ball on the seven. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Cameron Bray as the first half is winding down. And the Bucs will extend their lead here just before halftime. Suck up for the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. And with decent starting field position, there may be only a couple completions away from field goal range. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Throwing on first down. McCoy able to get this one to McBride. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And folks, this is a 67-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And they will remain two scores down as the difference holds at 11. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no avail. Comes up empty as we have reached the intermission. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports It'll be the Cardinals who get the ball first. They trail here as we resume action in the third quarter. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. McCoy. Flushed out right. And that is incomplete. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. Fielded just inside the 30. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Brought down by Jalen Thompson. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky. That play only picked up five yards. Brady's throw on target to Godwin here. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. 
128 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Fournette. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Now Fournette, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. They push forward, but I don't think it's enough. He's going to be about a yard short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. But a good play is made on defense. Oftentimes, leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. <laughs> to throw is Brady. This will be caught at about the six. Touchdown! Cameron Braid. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Now that's a drive that makes everyone happy on that bench because they accomplish exactly what they set out to do. Take care of the football, eat up a little clock, end up in the end zone. Now they've got a cushion for the rest of the game. So they didn't just help themselves offensively, they helped their defense out as well. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. The Cardinal offense takes back over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating from the gun, McCoy. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Here's Andy Lee now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Brady to his tight end, Braid, for the Tampa Bay first. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Fournette once more on second down. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Play action, now it's Brady. 
Try to throw the out route, and he completes it to Rudolph. And they're going to be set up now with the ball at the 13-yard line. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Into the red zone, it's Brady. And he's got it. And the Bucs are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves him all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Fournette. He is not going to get in here as they push him back to the two-yard line. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. On play action, it's Brady. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Cameron Bray, a two-yard touchdown grab as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. And Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. Yeah, that's multiple series now. They've ended with him in the end zone. A perfect plan on how to utilize him best when they get in close. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And they open the lead up now to 25. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Levante David making his presence felt in the backfield. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, oh, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. So a change of possession here on the punt. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail just space. Oh, snail space for him, and he can do whatever he wants because he has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Now Brady. Delivering a pass here to Evans on the out route. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. Up the gut, Fournette. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. They'll run it again with Fournette. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Now Brady throwing on second down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's a big turnover there on the final play of the quarter. 
One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. Following the fumble recovery, McCoy. And this will be swung out here for counter. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. From just shy of midfield, McCoy looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Connor. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Looking to throw. McCoy steps away to his left. Caught by Green on the out route. A lot of effort there for just a three-yard gain, and now second down. They'll look to throw again. Throw left side complete. That's Connor. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. The offense on third down tonight, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll just get rid of it. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. On the slant complete to Hopkins. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Back to throw again. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Joe Tryon Shoyinka showcasing the pass rush. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They run behind center with Connor. And he'll take this one down near the 15. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. Back to throw. McCoy looking middle, and that's complete. They do get eight out of the pitch and catch. However, it's fourth down. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin, fourth quarter. You're going. And that is caught by Brown for a Cardinal touchdown. Hollywood, Marquise Brown, his second touchdown of the night. And the Cardinals' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Extra point good by Prater. And that'll cut the lead down to 18. A 10 play drive that time. And it's Hollywood, Marquise Brown, who finishes it off with the touchdown. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. From the 24, Brady. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Evans. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A nice pickup of 23 on the third down conversion. This is Fournette. 
On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. 11 more on that one and another first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 21. Give them 12 yards on that one. It earns them a fresh set of downs. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. And he fires one incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They'll run with Fournette. And he's going to be taken down short of the first, right around the 15-yard line. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. So Brady departs, and on is Ryan Suckup for the Buccaneer field goal. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. Suckup's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you say, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Operating from the gun, McCoy. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. On first and 10, McCoy. And the catch made by Hopkins. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Again, he'll drop to throw. Being chased out left. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. On first down, McCoy. Flush to his right. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Vita Vea in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. After the sack on first down, McCoy. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Looking to throw. 
McCoy. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Logan Ryan. And the Bucs are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line. Another solid game-changing play for this defense for the interception. At this point, though, I don't know that it's game-changing. I mean, they've got this one in firm control. And you always hear about, you know, those stories about someone left their game plan behind and maybe you benefit from it. I'm not going to say that that happened, but they certainly have appeared on defense to be a step ahead this entire game. Guys are always in the right spot in order to make a play. The offense has had its moments, too. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Inside handoff now to Fournette. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Coming up on the final two and a half minutes. And boy, has it been fun to watch this offense operate. Quite the display, and now they look to polish it off. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back from the 34 now. Here's first and 10. Again, it's Fournette. And he'll go down at the 28. The last run got six, now second and four. A handoff to Fournette. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brady going to look to throw. Evans has it left side. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Leonard Fournette, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers have opened up a four-touchdown lead here in the fourth. Extra point try now for Suckup. And that'll increase their lead to 28. That time, a nine-play drive. And the man who finished it off with a run into the end zone, Leonard Fournette. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to make. That's into a crowd and intercepted. It's Devin White, the linebacker. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. Well, this one was already ugly, and now it's just kind of becoming a feast on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, partner, this is a unit that knows they've got this game in the bag with this huge lead, and it's going to drive their coaches crazy because they're telling them, play it straight, do all the right things, but these guys are going to be freewheeling now. All of them are going to take chances, and that one pays off with an INT and a return for six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. <laughs> 
Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling. No, again. you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one certainly was and I think both sides compete against each other all the time you go to each other in practice obviously your training camps your off season but on game day you both want to show your best and I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense a complete team victory So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Good night, everybody.